In this video, we're going to talk about the transition from a crib to a bed and figure out maybe when is the right time to do it and then how to make it happen smoothly. Hi, I'm Claire and this is Learning With Love. On our channel, we strive to help you awesome, hands-on, dedicated parents be there for your kids by supporting you with resources, advice, tips, and tricks. I hope you like this video. If you do, please click like and subscribe to our channel for more of our tips and tricks. So the first question to tackle is when is the right time to move your child from a crib to a bed? And the good news is there's actually a wide range of times that will work out just fine. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. At the very minimum age, it should be when they can kind of slide off the bed from their tummy to the floor safely. So that at least they can get off a bed by themselves. So that should be the lowest minimum age. At the maximum age, if your child is already climbing out of the crib by themselves, then it's time to go ahead and make the transition into a big kid bed. There are a lot of beds that you can transfer to next from a crib. And really, I don't have any preference for these, so whatever works best for your room, your space, your family, and your budget is all great. So you can use a crib that transfers into a toddler bed. You can use a dedicated toddler bed. You can use a regular twin bed a lowered twin bed. And another thing you can do to help make that transition easier is to buy bed rails that fold in under the side of the mattress to help the child from falling out. Um, and that's a good kind of midway transition point that you can use in the middle. I've used that for my kids and I will also give you a link to some of those things that you can put on the side to help your kids stay in bed so they just don't roll off. <laughs> I suggest you tackle one sleep issue at a time. So let's say you have a child who is getting rid of a pacifier and transitioning away from a pacifier. Don't do that at the same time that you transfer them to a bed. So you want other things to be stable, you want the rest of their sleep habits to be good, and then just try to do one thing at a time. So in this case, what you're gonna tackle is the movement from the crib to a bed. The last thing that's important to keep in mind when you're choosing when to transition your child from a crib to a bed is to make sure you're not doing it at the same time as any other big life transition or life stress. So the main one that parents run into with this is the arrival of a new sibling. But that's also the time that they want to transfer the child from a crib to a bed because they often want the crib for the new sibling. And that is okay. But there are a couple quick things you can do to help make sure those transfers don't happen at the exact same time, which will make the transition smoother for your older child or toddler. So one of the ways you can do it is just by transferring the child from the crib to the bed about two months or so before the new baby is born. That will work fine because then the toddler won't associate being moved with the fact that their new sibling is taking over the crib. Two months have passed, they won't associate those two events, and so they will feel better about that transition. And it enables them to transfer smoothly, feel comfortable sleeping in the new bed before the new baby arrives. The other way to do it, which also works just fine, is to transfer the older child a few months after the new baby arrives. Lots of new babies will sleep in a bassinet or a co-sleeper or in their parents' room for the first month or so or first couple of months. So that gives you the opportunity, if your older child still is comfortable in the crib, to stay there while the new baby is brought home. And then, maybe a month or two after the new baby arrives, the child can then be transferred once they're comfortable with the transition of their new sibling. And then maybe a few weeks later, then you put the baby into the crib so that the older child doesn't feel like they got ousted for the new baby to be in their crib. As long as you kind of provide some time gaps in between those events, the older child will find it much easier to make the transition and they'll get along with their new baby better. So now that you've decided you're going to make the transition to a big kid bed, it's great to talk it up and get your child excited about that transition. So you can do that by getting them invested in their new big kid bed by maybe helping them pick out some sheets or something new to go on the bed, some stuffies. Or maybe you can also read them some stories to get them excited about being in a big kid bed. One of the ones I really like is uh, the Elmo book, Big Enough for a Bed. And I will link to that below so you can go ahead and click on that if you'd like to share that with your child. So getting them excited about it will help them feel 
good about making that transition because it might be a little bumpy as they first make that transition. You want to make those first few days of transition into the new bed go as smoothly as possible because that's going to help them be successful to continue sleeping in their big kid bed. And it can definitely be a little bumpy on those first few nights, so let me talk you through some things to help make that go better. First of all, tell your child what you expect from them. Tell them that this is their new big kid bed and you expect them to stay in it because big kids can stay in their bed and that's where they're going to sleep safe and sound all night long. And then what you're going to do, you will tuck them in with their normal bedtime routine. And it's really important then in those first few nights that what you do is really vigilantly help them stay in their bed as they fall asleep. Because they have a lot of newfound freedom now that they're in the bed and what they're going to likely do is try to get out of it and explore the room and get out and see where they can go. So what I recommend is either using a baby monitor or staying close by the side of the door and when you do see that the child is getting out of bed, come back in, scoop them up, slowly put them back in bed and then head outside again. You're going to do this as many times as you need to until the child is staying in their bed until they fall asleep. It's not a punishment. They don't get in trouble, particularly at this point, for trying a new behavior for getting out of bed. They're not in trouble for doing it. However, it's not a reward either. In other words, you're not going to reward them with more attention and more love and huggles and snuggles and kisses too much when they get out of bed. You kind of want to make it as perfunctory as possible after you've already done your sweet snuggly bedtime routine, but you don't want them to get rewarded for getting out of bed over and over because... (laughs) That's going to make it hard for you and ultimately hard for them as they find it tougher to fall asleep in their new space. So your goal is to make them feel secure and safe in their room, to feel like they can get to you and get help if they need it, but that they don't need it because they're comfortably in their safe space, in their bed, and can fall asleep. So that's what you're going for. So especially in those first few nights, you want to continually bring them back to the bed, continue to put them back to bed, expect it to take a little more work for sure in those first few nights, maybe even in the middle of the night. But by continually reinforcing the idea that they have to go back to their bed and that they're secure and safe and that you will come and you will be there for them if they need you, they should start to feel secure and happy and safe in their bed and then get used to sleeping there. If you do that consistently for, let's say, the first week, the likelihood is that then you won't need to do it anymore because they're used to sleeping in their bed and they understand their expectations. So that's your goal. You want to get them in those first few days very comfortable sleeping in the bed so that then that becomes a much more peaceful bedtime going forward. So I hope that goes really smoothly for you. I would love to hear in the comments how that transition is working out for you. And if you even have a question or two, I'll be really happy to troubleshoot those for you. And uh, I hope you and your toddler have many, many great nights sleep. (laughs) 